This is probably an overshare and deserves trigger warnings around bees and child abuse and trauma. But I'm gonna share it anyway, because I think it's important. When I was little, we were walking through the woods and my little sister stepped right in the middle of a ground bee nest. Oh my God, it sounds like rain with them hitting it. I was behind her and our chosen dad grabbed her and ran from the bees and jumped in the river with her. And her face was so swollen. And I got left because obviously the priority was to get her away from the nest and the bees were chasing them. I was little and the fear of bees started there for me. Not long after, my mother had me climb the ladder into a crawl space attic of our new home. When we turned the lights on, we realized that there was a black hornet nest around the light switch. She had yelled at me several times to turn the switch off but I was too afraid to put my hand near the wasps crawling and to fix my fear. My mother took the ladder away so that I couldn't get down until I turned it off. I was 11. I remember closing my eyes and crying and hearing them buzzing by my head. I don't know how long I was up there. I don't remember after that. But since then, anytime any buzzing insects are near me, it triggers me into an immediate panic attack response in my body, even if I know that it's not a bee or that it can't hurt me. To this day, my mother maintains that she was doing it for me so that I wouldn't be such a scaredy cat anymore. So there's something full circle about the fact that I now have an entire nest of honeybees in the attic of my dream home. They have been there for more than three decades, which means they were moving into reliquarian house around the same time that I was experiencing all this trauma with bees when I was 11 years old. They do not come into the house and the window they are on is a sealed picture window creating this invisible safety barrier between us. Honeybees can recognize faces. Research in the field of vibrational medicine has shown that exposure to the frequency of their buzzing can stimulate the regeneration and repair of human cells and tissues. It reduces inflammation, stress, and cortisol levels, and can even lower pain. As is always the case, modern medicine is simply replicating what already exists in nature for us. They are also the single most important part of pollination and the existence of all our food crops and flowers. No bees, no humans. I have rarely spoken publicly of any of my childhood traumas. Anytime I spoke to anyone about it as a child, it made things worse and I've subconsciously carried that fear forward even though I'm far from being a child anymore. Several friends have said that the house and the bees are there to help heal that part of me, both in my physical nervous system and my spirit. And we have a natural frequency healing unit in the walls of this house for others that want to come be in that. So I'm planting gardens and maintaining the ones that exist here already, hoping to create a more symbiotic and loving relationship between the bees and I and this home that we share. Today was mostly about that, and also about the cleaning and stacking of about 900 pounds of old books for one of the next reliquarian shoots about a magical library where life stories are written and books grow from soul seeds. Things Tom Carroll does for me. Things he does for Elysian and the Reliquarian. It's day 21. This marks the end of three weeks in this adventure gamble experiment of mine. I have a little more than 11 weeks left. My greatest accomplishment so far has been the consistency of posting daily, which is helping me find a rhythm and creating content, finding my voice, and 
uncovering the true purpose of all this effort over the past 10 years as these individual threads finally start to braid together into one. The Reliquarian book is primarily about the journey of a girl healing a broken heart. And I am hoping that I am brave enough to walk that path and return to the self that was there before all of this damage. Part of that path is the writing of books and the creating of the images. That path has been buying this property and becoming a keeper of this home and its history. Part of that path is also not keeping all of these stories and hurt that I have been carrying silently anymore. I think part of the reason that I've been having a hard time creating has been because there's no room left inside me with all of these things that I hold in. I am finally learning the difference between empathy and codependency and how others feel in me sharing these things is not my responsibility to carry anymore. My responsibility is to heal in the most loving and compassionate way that I can so that these wounds don't carry into future chapters and generations. And it takes courage to do that. So I'm trying to be brave.